Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go over seven worked examples showing you how to calculate wave speed. If you haven't already done so, check out my other video covering the theory on wave speed and that way you'll be able to apply your knowledge to this video. So let's get going. The first four examples we'll do looks at the relationship between distance, speed and time. Question 1 says that a sound wave travels a distance of 150 metres through water in 0.12 seconds. Calculate the speed of sound in the water. Writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find speed. We know that distance is equal to 150 metres and the time is equal to 0.12 seconds. There's no prefixes here so we're good to go. So writing down our equation we have d equals vt so we need to rearrange for the speed. So the way we do that remember is divide both sides by t to get speed v on its own. So we end up with v equals d over t and then substituting in the numbers we get 150 divided by 0.12 which gives us an answer of 1,250 metres per second. Now notice that this isn't too far off the 1,500 metres per second, which is the stated value in the table in your data sheet. Question 2 says that when tourists near Edinburgh Castle watch the 1 o'clock gun being fired, they see the puff of smoke 5 seconds before they hear the bang. If the speed of sound is 340 metres per second, how far away are they from the castle? Writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the distance. We know that the speed of sound is 340 given in the question, and the time is 5 seconds. So writing down our equation, we have d equals vt. Substituting in the numbers, we have 340 times 5, which gives us an answer of 1,700 metres. Question 3 says that if the speed of sound in water is 1,500 metres per second, how long will it take sound to travel 1.5 kilometres in water? Writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the time. We know that speed is equal to 1,500 metres per second, and the distance is 1.5 kilometres. We've got a prefix here, kilo, so we need to convert that into metres, so that becomes 1.5 times 10 to the 3 metres, and then we're good to go and write down our equation. So we've got d equals vt, but in this question we need to rearrange for time, so dividing both sides by v, we end up with t equals d over v, and substituting in the numbers we get 1.5 times 10 to the 3 divided by 1500 gives us an answer of 1 second. Because you might have noticed that 1.5 times 10 to the 3 is the same as saying 1500. Question 4 says that a girl shouts from a ship towards a cliff. If she has a distance of 595 metres from the cliff, how long does it take for her to hear the echo return? And it gives us that the speed of sound is 340 metres per second. Now this is what we call an echo problem because it's not just going to be as simple as what we've been doing so far. So we've got sound that is travelling from the girl on the ship towards the cliff and then we've got the sound travelling back from the cliff and reflecting and echoing off the wall back to the ship. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the time. We know that the speed is equal to 340 metres per second and the distance given in the question is 595 metres. So if we do our straightforward calculation first, we write down our equation d equals vt. Rearranging for time again, we need to divide both sides by v, so we get t equals d over v. And substituting in the numbers, we get 595 divided by 340, which gives a time of 1.75 seconds. But we're not finished, because remember we've got an echo happening here. So we've got a time of 1.75 seconds, so because we're travelling twice the distance, then that time is going to be double the time. So all we need to do is times that time by 2, since it's an echo, and we end up with 3.5 seconds. Notice as well that we could have multiplied the distance by 2 instead during our calculation. So we could have multiplied the 595 by 2, instead of timesing our time by 2 at the end. We're now going to look at three examples relating speed, frequency and wavelength. Question 1 says that a sound wave has a frequency of 33 hertz and a wavelength of 10 meters. Calculate the speed of the sound wave. So writing down what we know from the question, v equals question mark. We know the frequency is 33 hertz and our wavelength lambda is equal to 10 meters. So writing down our equation, we have v equals f lambda, and then substituting in our numbers, we've got no prefixes, so we're good to go. We have 33 times 10, and putting that into your calculator gives an answer of 330 meters per second. Question 2 says that a wave generator in a pool creates waves with a wavelength of 0.2 meters. If the speed of the waves is 1.5 meters per second, find the frequency. So writing down what we know from the question, we have the f equals question mark v equals 1.5 meters per second, and the wavelength is 0.2 meters. So writing down our equation, we have v equals f lambda, but this time we need to rearrange for the frequency. So we need to divide both sides by the wavelength to get rid of it from this side. So dividing both sides by wavelength gives us f equals v over lambda, which when substituting in the numbers gives us 1.5 divided by 0.2, and then putting that into your calculator, we get 7.5 hertz. 
And lastly, question 3 says, what is the wavelength of waves with a frequency of 4 times 10 to the 6 hertz and a speed of 2 times 10 to the 4 meters per second? So a wee bit of practice of scientific notation here, but you'll see there are no prefixes used. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the wavelength. We know that the speed is 2 times 10 to the 4 meters per second and our frequency is 4 times 10 to the 6 hertz. So writing down our equation, we have V equals F lambda and then rearranging this time for the wavelength, we need to divide both sides by the frequency which gives us lambda equals V over F. And then substituting in our numbers gives us 2 times 10 to the 4 divided by 4 times 10 to the 6. Once you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 5 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. That's all from me folks, I hope you found the video useful, if you did give it a thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.